everyone, Ian here. So I wanted to show you this really cool little uh, tool that I found, which is called Shell GPT, which allows you to use ChatGPT in your terminal um, and allows you to query any, send any query as you would do over ChatGPT and get a response back directly in your terminal without having to go through the ChatGPT interface. So if you've got access to the API and able to generate your own keys, um, this is a really useful way of interacting um, with OpenAI. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd really uh, just highlight it here for you to have a play around with. So I'm going to go and install it with Pipex. Okay, cool. So now we've got a bunch of uh, examples of things that we can do here that are useful to us as, de as developers. Um, I've got a few things that I've already tried that I thought I'd highlight. So the first thing I'm going to do is ask it how many seconds there are in a day. So common question that you might have. Um, so I was asking for my OpenAI key there. So I've already got it copied into the terminal. If you've not got yours, you want to head to platform.openai.com and you'll find it there. I'm going to paste it in. And it comes back with, <laughs> you should know this number if you are a developer. Um, it should be right at the front of your mind. But um, yeah, if you haven't, you can just ask it a simple question like that. Um, you can also ask it, if we asked it something like, how do I run an, so let's say we run an Nginx Docker image. So it goes off, asks, and it'll come back and print it directly in our terminal so we don't have to go off and look it up on the interface. So it comes back with a whole load of very verbose steps there, which we're not really going to want that. We just want the command, right? We just need a command. We don't need all this talk. Um, it's still going. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, but what we can do is we can pipe into this that actually what we're looking for is a shell command. So you put dash dash shell, how do I run an Nginx Docker image? Or in fact, I don't even need to ask a question. I can literally truncate it to that. And it comes back with the command that we run, we'd run. Even better than that, because it's likely that we'll actually want to run it fairly soon after, we can actually supply an execute flag. And it will come back and say, do you want to run this? OK, let's run it. And it's telling me I haven't got Docker running, which is uh, classic. So let's open that. OK, let's try that again. Do you want to execute it? Yes. Unable to find it locally. Goes off and pulls it. And cool. We're running a Docker image, so um, if I do PS and see if it's running there, we can see that it is running there, and uh, uh, ChatGPT has given us the right command. Um, we can actually abbreviate those two commands slightly to dash S and E, so that makes it a, bit, a little bit easier to, um, so let's not run that again. Um, so we can just literally run those two uh, as flags rather than a full um, argument. Um, let's see if we can do something a little bit more complicated. So this one, I'm going to ask it to um, show all the processes that is, uh, show all the processes that are running with that are an Nginx image. So it will prompt us if we want to. Oh, okay, we've got quotes. This is what happens when you use Notion. And so it's saying um, that it's going to use this filter flag and it uses an ancestor Nginx. Um, that's not something that I'm going to remember, and you might have to quickly remembering as well. Similarly, with many other commands, you may have you may forget them as well, and so it's really handy to be able to query it uh, like this. So yeah, there it comes back with the correct Nginx image that's uh, running at the minute. That, and if we were running something else, it would obviously filter it out of the way, which is really handy. Um, another common one is something like FFmpeg. If you can't remember all the commands for that, it's so really ridiculously powerful that there's so many different things you can do there. 
What we can do though is we can actually initiate a session with it. So we can do a chat session and let's and the argument to chat is f of mpeg. Um, so I'm gonna say convert a number of images to a movie, which is something I commonly had to do uh, when I was working in the film industry, <laughs> take a load of uh, image shots, images and frames and turn them into a, a movie. And so here it's going again with the kind of directing into a kind of chat uh, uh, interface with it. We can guide it by adding those shell flags again. So now we've got, what we've actually done is we've opened up a chat session. We can carry on talking about that um, chat session and guide it saying that we um, want a shell command. Okay, and we also need to state this an FFmpeg command to convert an image. I like this little thing saying you're consulting robots. That's uh, amusing. So this come back saying, even though we specified it as shell, it has actually got some cruft, <laughs> so I'd like to call it uh, around the edge. Um, the neat thing is because we've got it as a session, we can go back and then say uh, make the output a mov. And it's using the same session that we've got there to uh, correctly output. The thing here is um, that you can see that it's actually taken the output. The last response that it gave is not, no longer saying, saying using this output as input here. So if I say combine everything into a single command, then it comes back with this full command, which is something that you I couldn't possibly remember that, and I would have to go off and look it up. Um, admittedly, it would be um, something you probably store somewhere after you've done it once, but uh, yeah, this, you can see how this is going to be really useful for looking up stuff if you're just in the terminal. Um, another thing we can do is actually, there's a, another flag, which is code, uh, which allows us to basically just get it to um, output scripts. So output the code that we want it. So let's say um, Python code for Mandelbrot. Oops, that's not particularly. Okay, there we go. So we've got a whole, this is literally come back mostly the code. It does have some filler stuff at the top there, which is not particularly handy, but I mean, this is going to be great for just spitting it out to a, piping that to a file and then using it. So let's say something other than that, like, um, okay, so I've said use Python to scrape links from the Hacker News homepage. So we've said that with code again, with the code argument, and it gives us some nice, so let's spit that straight out to a scrape file. Um, let's make sure that's actually the same thing that we had before, which it is. I'm not sure if it's caching this or if it's going off. And so, if I put the same thing in twice, whether or not it caches it, but it does have a kind of cut off on the memory. So, if you go in, um, say GPT. There is options in order to be able to change the chat cache length to a certain number of messages, because obviously those messages are all sent over the wire every time that an API request is made. Um, but yeah, let's see if this actually works. So if we install um, beautiful soup for and requests. Okay, that's good. So weirdly that seems to be looking at a particular class. So I'm actually gonna get rid of, I'm gonna have to edit this. 
Let's just try that. Okay, so we actually got something back that time. So not perfect, so I've had to edit it, but really handy to not have to go and think of all that stuff myself and uh, find out the minor details of it. Um, now I'm gonna know how to use um, Beautiful Soup, but if you if you don't use it regularly, then it's uh, handy to be able to kind of make this, to be able to just throw this out to ChatGPT and get it to do it for you. Now I'm guessing that some of you uh, will be asking, but we're gonna be able to do this with GitHub Copilot X that was announced earlier this week. In fact, actually, let's put it up here. So it's a suite of tools that was announced earlier this week by GitHub. Um, they have got things for, so it's an extension of GitHub Copilot. They are going to be able to bring um, ChatGPT into Visual Studio Code and into the terminal and into pull requests, three different places, and be able to search documentation. So lots of new things there that's all very exciting, but none of it is available yet, and you have to sit on a wait list for it. Also, this Copilot X um, and Copilot itself are paid for products that are um, a monthly fee, whereas the API is obviously you just pay for what you're using with chat GPT. And we're talking pennies here. If I go to my platform, so if I go to uh, my account and look at what I've used, I can see that I've used 9p or 9 cents rather. Um, and that is, uh, yeah, that's tiny, uh, depending on what you get paid uh, as a developer. So yeah, I think this is really useful. Um, the fact that we can just query any command, get it in the bash straight away, um, get it in terminal and not have to move out of uh, the terminal to use, do things is fantastic. Um, hopefully you'll go and check it out um, and uh, see what you can do as well. Um, yeah. So that's all for now. Um, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, uh, sub consider subscribing to the channel and I'll speak to you soon in a new video. All right, bye for now.